let's look at Priority's production process. We'll start right at the core with an item. Specifically, I want to find a finished item. I have a number of bikes in the system, so if I search on bike and pick up one of these finished items, you'll see that there are two core elements to the production process and the definition of the part. The first is the bill of materials. These rather simplistic components are the bill of materials for this finished item. And it's really nothing more than that, just a list of the items that are going to make up the part. The clever stuff is really more res reserved for the routing. Let's actually drill into the routing to get a little bit more of a picture about what's going on. So this lists the various operations that are going to be performed on the part. The, um, we're going to have a release on the work order and then there will be an assembly that will take place on the work cell service area and some testing on the work cell testing area. And at the end of that process, the parts will, the, the finished item will automatically be released from floor stock to the warehouse that I've defined here, which is the main warehouse. I've also got a length of time that is defined on the production and MRP uh, processes. If we go back to the, uh, the actual part, the other aspect of all of this can be found on one of the subforms, which is that we can define for each of those operations what the value in terms of minutes is that will actually be costed by way of labour. So we've already put the length of processing time, but that's, if you like, the machine. This is the person. So if you want a different value or a costed on the labour to the machine hours that are being taken, then um, the part processing parameters allows you to do this. Priority has a routine that rolls up all the quantities and costs that you've applied and creates a full costing. We could check out any issues in terms of the proper configuration of our data. I'm satisfied with what I have on the part that we're going to look at. So I'm going to proceed. So if we actually want to see the results of running that costing, then uh, we can pick up, for example, a costing report uh, and check out the standard cost analysis, which will show us the cost breakdown. And we can run this for a given date. We'll run it for today. And we can choose a specific part number. I'm going to leave it on the part that we've been looking at, the bike. And here you can see each of the component costs at current cost, current standard, and also the rolled up processing cost of all of the labour hours within the operations that we've uh, configured. And behind the scenes there are standard costs for each skill that you that you define so you can have different skills on on each operation uh, with different costs all right let's go ahead and sell some of these finished items i'm creating a sales order and i'm going to drop in a customer doesn't really matter which one i choose at this point and I'm going to go down and add in an order item for the part that we've been working with. And if we view this in a slightly more user-friendly way, you will see that the um, that we can specify a quantity. I'm going to put a large quantity in here to make sure that we we don't have enough inventory to fulfill 
the, uh, the order. You'll notice that the costing has come through from the costing routine that we ran earlier. And then the other part is that on an order by order basis, in fact, right down to the items on the order, we can determine whether they are going to be taken account of in running the MRP. So we've now got our sales order details in. We can go ahead and run the main MRP routine. Now, MRP uh, within this system is really the heavy lifting of the whole production system. There are a number of uh, questions that will come through uh, by default. Um, I can accept the defaults. I'm sure they're, they're all basically going to be configured correctly. Um, but what this is going to do is it's going to go through and aggregate the shortfall of raw materials in order to make the, the sales orders that we've now sold. So if we just go through and uh, accept all of the various options and then perhaps the most important stuff, we do want to create a work plan, we then we'll also want to run purchase planning and uh, at this point, we're not going to worry too much about floor stock. We're, we're going to pick up our inventory figures from the warehouse. So that's going to go through and run the full MRP. Our first indication that the MRP uh, has run correctly would come from the purchase recommendations report. So this will actually show us what the system is suggesting that we should buy in order to fulfill the sales orders that we have. It's prompting us to when we last uh, ran the report. I'm going to run it through until the end of the year for all parts that we need to order. And you can see the various, um, the various parts that are required to make the bike that we've been working with and the, um, the uh, requirements. With a series of quantities and dates, we haven't filled in any of the lead times on the parts, so all of the dates are pretty much the same. But this is giving us a clear indication of the purchase requisitions that it's created, which we could then fulfill through, um, through purchasing. We can see the effect of running the MRP by looking at the MRP Gantt chart, which is actually the graphical scheduling within priority. You can determine what date range will actually display within the schedule. And once that has um, crunched the numbers, it will display each of the work cells that we've configured. The, the, um, uh, here, here are the two that all the operations are actually currently working on. And you can see each of the components of work, each of the operations are in here. If we highlight an individual one, we can display uh, details, which just gives us a quick overview of the information. Uh, perhaps more interestingly, we can actually zoom right into the work order itself from the schedule so that we can work with the work order if we, if we pick up uh, an error. Uh, but if we go back to the, the schedule, the other thing that we may want to do is delay uh, one of the pieces of work. So I'm delaying my, um, uh, my work order 13, and um, you'll notice that the dependency goes with it. First of all, it tells us that because this was all done on a just-in-time basis, by delaying the operation, we're delaying the, the delivery of the whole order. The second thing is you'll notice that here is the operation that we delayed and here is the second uh, uh, operation within the same work order following its dependency, so delayed as well. We're going to zoom into uh, this uh, work order 14 uh, in order to go ahead and actually release it. So all we need to do is mark it as, as released um, which uh, starts the, the whole production process off. And from there I can print the work order so we can see what on earth is actually happening. We'll take this to screen. 
And what you can see here is the routing on of the the uh, the two operations, how long they're going to take, um, and the kit list uh, for those operations, the parts that we actually require and their quantities. And we haven't bothered setting up remarks or or the reported production components. Another very useful way to look at all this information is to run uh, what some people would call a work to list. So if we go into the MRP uh, reports and run the, um, the work plan, and we'll run it through to the end of the quarter for all work cells, you'll see each of the work orders themselves and the operations required and their timings for people to start work on. So we're going to zoom in from into one of the work orders from the schedule and um, you'll see that the uh, there is a progress report and uh, we're going to pick up actually the, while we're about it let's pick up the uh, the work order number and from the uh, the progress report we can actually drill into the uh, progress uh, reporting production and this is where we can specify um, the um, the shift and the employee and uh, we're going to also at this point bring in the work order that we were working with and um, what that does is it uh, specifies the quantity uh, and the first of the operations that's actually going to be done. And um, there are a series of other fields on this uh, form, but the important one, uh, an important one apart from the employee ID, which we'll bring in specifically now, um, is the uh, quantity completed. And in this case, we completed eight. So that is specifying that the, the operation for, uh, for doing the bike assembly is uh, is now in effect uh, completed same can be done with the testing and um, and in this way we'll specify that they're completed as well now the important point to realize is that i'm currently showing one specific form within priority but in many many cases this data will not be manually entered. There are a number of ways that the data can get into the system from machines and shop floor data collection through to loading from spreadsheets. Um, but the, 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 the key to all of this is that, that as long as it's on the reporting production form, it'll go through to the work order. And um, so our, our progress is then uh, complete. And all we need to do is close the work order.